The exhibition came about uh, through its uh, happenstance, really. The relationship of the artist personally uh, has to do with John Nixon, uh, now living and working in Melbourne. He met Peter and Karen 20 years ago in Copenhagen at an opening. Uh, they then in turn became uh, friends over a short period of time and established a relationship between Sydney and Copenhagen, these uh, two groups of artists. Over, over the last 20 years, all of the people in this show have worked with Peter and Karen in various ways, either there or here. And we brought the show, we brought them into Sydney to the Sydney Non-Objective Exhibition Rooms uh, to do a feature exhibition on Peter and Karen, but uh, the opportunity came up to do a small presentation here. So we, so we have a sample works, a sample show of works from, from them, but also their friends. And so this is a, a really nice exhibition about uh, above and beyond stylistic links or philosophical or art critical links. It's about a friendship that's built up over a long period of time. There are many others as well, but in particular Kyle Jenkins and uh, John Nixon, myself and Michael Dwyer uh, uh, have, have a good close working relationship with them and so the show is called Sydney Copenhagen. Uh, the KLPHKJBGNDJN Ensemble. All of these artists are well known, established, uh, and internationally exhibited non objective artists. Now, that ties us together very tightly and has done over the last 20 years uh, to a much broader group of gallerists, slash artists, curators, who have worked kind of in an alternate postmodernism. Uh, period where uh, particular interests were mapped out and carefully detailed in a, in a range of interconnected exhibitions from uh, cities all over the world. And, and, um, so this group is quite unique in that sense and it's linked very heavily to the Sydney Non-Objective Group, which is not in fact a Sydney group, it just operates out of a building in Sydney. It's, it was a group put together to represent the interests of contemporary Australian non objective artists and their connections to people overseas. So in that sense, it's, it's a typical show that we do where we sample up you know, what people are currently doing, we present them. Uh, they're usually very fun events, very simple, um, and uh, people can come and uh, see what they're doing currently. Um, and it's a very interesting genre because the uh, the whole idea of the genre is that um, people don't need to reinvent the wheel in every exhibition, they simply present what they're doing now. And this is in a way a kind of forgotten idea that artists have a, uh, a kind of, not so much linear line, but a, a direction that they take over the course of uh, long periods of time. And this is, a, this is an idea that our particular curatorial group is really interested in. So the early career, the mid-career and late career, and we call that the flat platform I to operate on. And this is a classic uh, exhibition in that sense. No, simply because it, uh, I've been arguing for about two years now that Snow needs to return to a simple pro format because uh, operating what's the equivalent of a small museum program with volunteers and where you turn over shows every month with quite large numbers of people in them is, as you can imagine, it is exhausting. Uh, no matter how altruistic you are, there are limits. And so these kinds of spaces are things that I grew up with, I understand, I like, and I think they are, they're really functional and they're really uh, efficient and you get the idea without a huge outlay uh, now, it doesn't serve the purpose of somebody wanting to present a very large body of work or a major installation or whatever. However, on a more pedestrian level, really a lot of work gets done in, in these really well-organised small spaces, so you know, we like them a lot.